I'm Todd Mitchell, owner of Cybersecurity for Biz, and I want to talk to bookkeepers about some pressing issues that I have seen. Um, a lot of you have to pay extra for secure data storage, or you have to pay extra for computer protection software, or you have to pay extra for email solutions that are too complicated and your clients don't want to use them, so they're still sending you critical information. Uh, social security numbers and financial data through plain text and email and sometimes the systems you're using are threatening to lock you out like QuickBooks or the IRS's uh, interface uh, they're trying to lock you out because you're not cybersecurity compliant um, and another big issue is professional liability um, errors and omissions insurance are charging you extra because you can't prove you're cybersecurity compliant or maybe they're threatening to drop your policies. Um, and this is all because of the Graham Leach Bliley Act's safeguard rule. And the deadline is coming up of June 9th, 2023. And this is the reason why you're seeing some of these other uh, implementations being put in from the insurance and some of these other big uh, software systems that you're using. Um, so, what is the Graham Leach Bliley Act safeguard rule? Well, Graham Leach Bliley Act uh, has been in place since 1999 and it uh, used to affect licensed professionals like CPAs and stockbrokers and insurance brokers and uh, official financial uh, banking institutions. And um, s about 2006, they added a clause in it that says instead of just uh, saying that it affected uh, licensed professionals it said licensed professionals and you have to secure your customers information but it didn't really go into a lot of details well in the fall of 21 they passed a safeguard rule and the deadline because of COVID was extended a couple of times but now it's coming up on June 9th and they were not going to extend it again so this one is the actual real deadline and what the safeguard rule did was two things first of all it clearly defined what protecting your customer's information looks like and it lays out um, basically mandates that you follow the government's uh, NIST uh, cybersecurity framework or the 800-171 series and it also um, detailed a second thing which was it allowed the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC, which is a governing body over the Graham Leach Bliley Act and it allowed them to redefine the financial industry. And when they redefined it, basically, they say now that the financial industry doesn't just include licensed professionals, it includes anybody who sells, offers, or advises on financial services or products or any loan-like activities being conducted. So this just brought in a whole bunch of other financial industry professionals. So you no longer are just uh, affected if you're a CPA. Now if you're a bookkeeper, accountant, tax consultant, tax preparer, financial advisor, wealth advisors, all kinds of things. And as far as the banking institution, it's the same type of situation. It's no longer just the banks. It's anybody that does loan-like activities. We're talking buy here, pay here car dealers, furniture stores that offer lines of credit, uh, even some charities that loan you maybe a couple hundred dollars to pay your electric bill in the winter and you pay them back over the next few months. Uh, those are loan-like activities. They're now being considered part of the financial industry and are required to have cybersecurity in place to protect your customer's information. Uh, now, as a consumer, I personally think that this is a good thing. I mean, I don't care if you work for H&R Block or if you're a stay-at-home mom on your dining room table. If I'm giving you my bank account information and my social security number, birthday, and things like that, you should be doing uh, the same level of security to make sure my information stays safe. So it's a good rule. The bad part about it is that this rule was not well advertised. And I think uh, from my experience, there is a whole lot of people, especially smaller micro businesses and entrepreneurs that are affected by this rule that don't understand what it is or are not even aware of its existence. Um, so today I wanted to basically kind of point out to you some of the things that this rule includes and what you have to do about it.
So as a bookkeeper, there's five things you need to do to have cybersecurity compliance. The first is a documented inventory of all your assets. Uh, and this is, includes hardware and software assets, as well as the people involved in the process and the types of data that you are storing and transmitting. Um, and the second thing you need to look at is a risk management plan to find your threats and vulnerabilities. Now, risk management plan, basically you take all the known threats and vulnerabilities, and this is an evolving thing, so you can always add to it, um, and you assess those for the likelihood of occurrence and the consequence if it does occur. And then you basically uh, make a list prioritized by the highest priority ones dealing with those first and finding ways to mitigate them down to a lower priority if it's something you can't fix. Uh, the third thing you need to look at is implementing basic cybersecurity best practices. These include things like having strong passwords, not sharing user accounts, uh, having a uh, secure configuration on your router, secure big configurations for your firewalls, uh, making sure all your operating system and your apps are up to date and uh, have the latest security on them, and making sure that you're also um, just uh, keeping your information encrypted, um, whether it's stored on your computer or whether you're using it in transit through um, some type of uh, communication with text or email or, um, or storing it in the cloud, things like that. The fourth thing you need to do is you need to have an endpoint detection and response uh, system, which is basically um, antivirus, anti-malware, anti-phishing, anti-spam, anti-all the things you can think of. Um, and they kind of roll it all into one system. And the key to this is it needs to be monitored in order to be cybersecurity compliant. You can't just have these systems on your computer. You have to have somebody designated in writing that's going to respond to alerts and uh, decide what action needs to be taken and make sure that that action is taken. Um, the fifth thing is you need to have email security, including attachments, uh, so that you can safely communicate with your clients and pass um, personal, personally identifiable and financial information back and forth. I have made packages just for bookkeepers that answer all five of these areas. I used software called Trustify for email security. It is uh, something that just basically it's an add-on to Google uh, Gmail and to Microsoft Outlook um, accounts so that you can just um, still use your same software you have been using to check your emails and send emails and this uh, rides on it and gives you a couple extra features where you can password protect emails, you can two-factor authentication on the emails, you can set the email to expire at a certain time and it just goes away if it hasn't been opened fast enough. Um, you can make it so that it deletes after it has been opened. The attachments are automatically uh, in included in the emails. Um, it's all encrypted end to end. Um, it, it comes with a log uh, feature so that you know if it's been Emails have been opened and received and read and things like that. Um, I also have a solution for endpoint detection and response. Uh, and um, I have a cybersecurity plan that basically walks you step by step through how to do everything as far as the documenting the inventory of your assets and the risk management and implementing the basic cybersecurity. Um, more than willing to have a free consultation with anybody to see if we're going to be a good fit to work together. Uh, I provide people with, after that consultation, I provide you with a written quote and a detailed list of exactly what we're going to do. There's no hidden charges, there's no extra fees. Um, my endpoint detection response and my email security come as part of my package. It's all inclusive deal. Um, so there's no surprises. Uh, you know exactly what you're getting into and I do uh, work exclusively with uh, small business and entrepreneurs, uh, basically zero to five employees. I've got a couple of clients that have maybe 10 employees, but I don't go anything bigger than uh, 20 at the very, very most. Um, if you uh, 
are looking for somebody who knows how to work with a small business and is a small business themselves. Um, I am also a sole entrepreneur working out of my house, um, and uh, I'm what you get. Uh, there's no, there's no uh, surprises, no um, extra people answering the phone, no call centers in foreign countries or anything like that. Um, I answer the questions, I do the work, and I'm the, the one that will be working with you. Uh, so please um, give me a call, uh, check out my information, and thank you very much.